Shalom, Akiam, Barakafah, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Double Honest to the Apostles, and Shalom to all of the sincere Akiam worldwide. There's been a lot of talk recently about Gentiles, man, and you've got a lot of scoffers trying to talk about the Gentiles or these heathens and these other nations. So I want to do this quick video, bring out a couple of scriptures just to re emphasize the fact to brothers that may be new to the truth, brothers still build, building up their faith, that the Gentiles, man, in the New Testament, you have two types of Gentiles. You have the natural Gentiles and the unnatural Gentiles. You've got the Gentiles that are actually the other nations and then you've got Israelite foreigners, man. you just got to go through the actual original languages sometimes. you got to understand the meaning of words, man, before. And I'm going to go into that in this sit-down. I'm going to start with Ephesians chapter 2 and 11, which says, Wherefore, remember... That ye being in past time, in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So I'm gonna go into that. So basically, in short, man, the uncircumcised, the uncircumcision, the uncircumcised Israelites were basically referred to as Gentiles by the circumcision. So Israelites that were following the law, keeping the commandments, trying their best, well, you know, according to what they were saying, trying their best to you know, keep the ways of the Most High. We're looking at the um, um, Israelite foreigners that had gone off into the ways of the other nations when Paul and them were trying to bring them in and said, how can you bring these people within our midst? They've been practicing, you know, Greek philosophy and, you know, all of the other philosophies of the heathen for so long and now you're just going to turn around and bring them around us. They don't even keep the law of circumcision. They don't circumcise their children. They don't, you know, keep the Sabbath. They don't do nothing. They probably even eat heathenistic foods, man. You go into the words Gentiles there. Why is it saying that? That's Satan. My internet's connected. Hey, man. Satan trying to fuck with the lesson. Yeah, okay, let's get it in. So the word, word Gentiles there is ethnos, yeah? And Ephesians 2 and Strong's G, 1484. Ethnos. Ethnos. And it says, A multitude, whether of men or beasts, associated or living together, a company, troop, swarm, a multitude of individuals of the same nature or genus come on man <laughs> so you know that should that should answer the question anyway it says wherefore remember that ye being in time past gentiles in the flesh yeah but notice like i said yeah, you know there's going to be different words for gentiles it says gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision and the flesh made by hands. So the Israelites that had been keeping the law, you know, living in Jerusalem and that, that knew they were Israelites, were looking at these other people like Timothy, you know, his farm and his family. And, you know, you had the Egypt, um, Ethiopian eunuch, who was an Israelite, just based in Ethiopia, and all of these other Israelite foreigners. And the original, is um, you know, not the original, but the Israelites that had kept their heritage were looking at them like, how are you going to try and incorporate these heathen into our, our customs? It's like if you're a so-called West African or a so-called West Indian, man, and then you leave your country for a while and come to the UK, people, and then you go back, people are going to be looking at you like, you know, they even got words for it. In, in Ghana, they got a word called obroni, which basically means like, you know, a black white man, so to speak. You get me? Like, when you're, you know, not, originally based in that land your own countrymen your own kinsmen will look at you like you're a heathen and that's exactly what was happening then it says anyway that at, that at the time you were without mashiach being aliens from the commonwealth of israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without the most high in the world because at one point they were just totally heathens man just going into the ways of the other nations until they got turned around but now in mashiach yahweh Ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Mashiach. So ultimately, because Yahweh Shai died on the cross, all of Israel got a chance of redemption. But the only ones that are going to fully take it are the elect, man. But you saw there, man, the word was ethnos in Ephesians 2 and 11, meaning a ma you know, people of a similar, uh, similar stock, a similar tribe, man. The Most High sent His Son only to deal with Israel and Israel alone. That's why when you read Luke, the first chapter and the 68th verse, it says, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for He has visited and redeemed His people. Who are His people? The Jews, man. And that's why when you have the Samaritan woman talking to Yahweh Shai, saying, My fathers have worshipped this, this well for years, she turned around and He turned around to her and said, 
John 4 and 22. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews, man. Yahweh Shai cut that shit and he told us straight, man. The only people that salvation is for is for the Jews. And that's straight and to the point. We can go into that all day, Psalms 147 and 19, Isaiah 45 and, you know, 17. I mean, 7, so like the list goes on and on. Anyway, next scripture I want to grab is Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, and around the 36th verse, I believe. Just give me a second, Akio. Um, Ezekiel 36, and um, let's start from actually verse 33. Uh, yeah, Ezekiel 30, 36 and 33. It says, is that the point I want to start from? One sec? No, not even there. Let's start from um, verse yeah, 24. Then, for I will take you from among the heathen, <laughs> yeah, and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Let's read that again. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. The Lord said he was going to take us from among the heathen, man. The scripture also says that he shall set, set, set the sheep on his on his right hand and the goats on his left. Let's see if I can grab that as well real quick. But hey, man, he said, take us from among the heathen, bring us into our own land, man. We weren't going to, going to go into the land of Israel by bowing, man. By Boeing plane, for, 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 um, by Boeing aircraft, or you know, um, super jets or or, or ships. Yahabash Shmi Hashem said he would take us by his own hand, man. So that's how you know that those Israelites, man. That's one of the many ways you know those those so-called Jews, man, are not the Israelites of the Bible. <laughs> anyway, it says then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and it goes on to tell us about how you know the Lord will purify us. But he said he will take us from among the heathen, man. He's even prophesied that in the New Testament, in Matthew, the 25th chapter, going on from the 33rd verse, you know, the wheat and the tares, which says, um, the 33rd, Matthew 25 and the 33rd um, verse, Salakia, says, and he shall, so let's start from verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and his righteousness, and before him shall be gathered all nations. Now that's everyone. Yeah, not just Israel, all of the nations. And it says here, and he shall separate them one from another, as a sheep, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. So answer me this: You're trying to Esau's trying to, you know, build a metropolitan society. You got London that's supposed to be a metropolitan city. New York, D.C., L.A., all of these other cities that are supposed to be multicultural, including everyone. But I just said in the Bible, in the New Testament, that the Most High is going to separate all the nations one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats, and he shall set his sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. How is the Most High going to make the vision if everyone's supposed to be together? Answer me that. I dare one of you Christians answer me that. Anyway. Then the king shall say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was, and then let's just go straight to the point. And then um, verse 41, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Hey, why is the most high son, Yahweh Shai, going to make that distinction if he's down to save everybody? Tell me that, man. Israel was a lot of his inheritance, man. Deuteronomy 7 and 6 will tell you straight into the point, you know, milk and butter scriptures, but it says, For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God, Yahweh, the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So here we're saying Israel is going to be above all the people on the face of the earth because they were chosen. And then it's telling you in Matthew the 25th chapter that the Most High is going to set a specific group of people on his right hand side and the rest on the left and then burn the ones on the left. Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine that. But then you want to talk about God's old love and he loves everybody. You Christians, man, you got to get out of that Christian plantation um, doctrine like Apostle Sahar always refers to it as. Yeah, Israel was scattered. Israel was being redeemed back. That's all that is. That's why you got Israelite foreigners and then Daniels, it talks about the confusion of faces because not every Israelite is going to come looking like a stereotypical black man. Yeah? Not every Israelite is going to have an Afro and, you know, 
like so, melanated skin, you're gonna get some some Israelites that might even look like the so-called Jew, man. And that's the reality of it. You know, that's how far out the Most High is, because you had Israelites that laid seed everywhere. Deuteronomy 28 and 64. One of the curses said, And the Lord Jehovah Shemi HaRashiah shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there shalt thou serve other gods which neither, their son, which neither thou nor their fathers have known, even wood and stone. So basically the Lord cursed us and straight up said, I'm going to scatter you amongst all of these other nations, amongst the Elamites, amongst the Moabites, the Ammonites, regardless of what they're called now. And you're going to also lose track of me and follow other gods just as you've been doing. So what do you think happened when those original um, you know, inhabitants then had children and their children had children? Because even in modern day society now, when a so-called Ghanaian or whatever or, or West African man has children and he's speaking the tribal language and he's got the passport for his homeland, his children born in the UK take UK citizenship and they don't give a fuck about no tribal languages of the Ashanti, of the Yoruba, or none of that. They're just literally trying to get a come up in Esau society, man. Our people have been in slavery so long they feel like they're a part of the system. But Yahabar Shem Yahashan is going to redeem us out of it. The elect first and then on the other side the rest of Israel, man. But that's why all the apostles wrote to the Israelite foreigners. you got an example here in James 1 and 1 where James wrote, James, the servant of Yahabar Shem Yahashan and of the Lord... Yeah, well, you know, of God and of the Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, so Yahweh Shai Yahweh Shai, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Why is James writing to the 12 tribes scattered abroad specifically? Because if Israel was as the sand of the sea, man, and really and truly, we went off. Now, Yahweh Shai Yahweh Shai sent his prophets back to get us back on track, man. And that's why, I mean, brothers, it's just plain to see, man. It tells you literally right there that Yahabar Shem Yahashai is dealing with Israel. Israel, the flesh. It tells you in Matthew 25th chapter he's going to separate the sheep, which have always been Israel, from the goats, man. Primarily Esau and the rest of these other nations. And he's going to burn these other nations, man. They're going to suffer, but the ones that are totally going to be destroyed are the Edomites. Romans 9, I'm going to start from verse 1. I say the truth in Mashiach, I lie not. This is the writing of Paul. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. So Paul was upset. Let's find out why. He said, For I wish that myself were accursed from Mashiach, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So what Paul was saying was, I wish I could catch hell on behalf of my 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 brethren, man, you know, my, my brothers, my my kinsmen, man, according to the flesh. I wish I could catch the hell for them, who are Israelites. <laughs> According to the flesh, who are Israelites. So Paul basically said, people that I'm related to, people of my genealogy or my stock, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of Yahabar Shem Shai and the promises, whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Yahweh Shai Mashiach came, who is over all, God bless forever, Amen. So he just said straight out right there that the only reason Yahweh Shai came back on the scene was to redeem Israel. Why? Because Israel were the only ones that received the laws of Moses, the 613 laws in Mount Sinai, not them in any other nation. So it says clearly in verse 4, who are Israelites, not Israelites in Edom, not Israelites in Moab or Ammon or Elam or any one of these nations, just specifically Israel, man, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of Yahweh Shem Shai and the promises. It says, who are the fathers? Meaning that the forefathers, man, that this was prophesied to were all Israelites, man. And he knew that he himself was poor and a lot of the other brothers out there came from these 12 patriarchs through the spirit, through the prophecies, through the ancient history. You know, it's all plain to see, man, and it resonates with our spirit, man. Israel is the lot of the most high's inheritance, man. You know, I'm going to grab real quick, nearly done, Isaiah 45 and 7, just to drive home the point, man. All the New Testament, the most high said that he changeth not, you know. Isaiah 45 and 7. Um, 17, so like you know, Isaiah 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. <laughs> Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. I don't see none of these other nations there. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded 
world without end. Yeah? So basically, Israel's going to rule forever, man. One second. This is the last scripture I'm going to bring out. Yeah, Israel's going to rule forever, man. And these other nations are going to fear us. They're going to know that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is with the Israelites, man. And it's going to be just like it was in ancient times where these other nations literally just gave decadence and, you know, just honoured Israel, man, for the great that great nation that we were through the spirit and power of the Lord. We're going to get that back. Isaiah chapter 60 and 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. So basically the important people in these heathen nations are going to be below the most base Israelite, man. You're going to have the highest Edom, Elamite, the highest Moabite, the highest Ammonite, and he's going to be below the lowest Israelite in the kingdom. Ultimately, that's beautiful, man. Amen. It says, For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favour have I had mercy on thee. The Most High punished us because he expected a lot from Israel. But although he put it in our spirit to, you know, go off and get punished for it, the Most High created us to be righteous, man. And ultimately, that's what we got to work towards. It says, Therefore thy gates shall be open continually, yeah? So our trade shall be abundant. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. Now, these Gentiles here, man, are the natural Gentiles, man. You know, even though this is the Old Testament, I'm going to grab it anyway, you know. Gawi, the real way of saying this. Strong's Gawi. age, 1471. Goy. Goy. Gawayim. Yeah, that's the real way of saying it. You know, the, the elites call these people Goyim, meaning heathens, you know. The real way of saying it is Gawayim, which says nation, people. It says nation, people, usually of non-Hebrew people, of descendants of Abraham. And even though, that, you know, there were many descendants of Abraham, including Israel, you also had um, Ishmael, you had all of the other Shemitic nations, you know. Amen. Not everyone that came out of came out of Abraham was was classed as an Israelite. You know, Lot was Abraham's cousin, man. You know, and he and he through you know that drunken sex he had with his daughters produced Lot and Ammon of through incest. Amen. It says here usually of non-Hebrew people. Those are the natural Gentiles, man. And what did he have to say? He said that they may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Hey, so the Most High just said, any other he um, heathen nation, any other race that doesn't want to give reverence, or reverence unto my super race that I have created is going to be totally destroyed. That's the that's the book, man. That's the holy book of the Bible. That's what you read in church and look over when your church pastor's telling you about his life story and when he met his, his wife and when they went on the ministry. This is what you're missing out on. And this is what your heart, Bashim, your heart is going to destroy you for because of your lack of knowledge, man. With all that, get and get understanding and stay humble. I want to go into Lord within the name of the Lord in another video next. But, hey, man. The Gentiles are either natural Gentiles being these other nations or unnatural Gentiles being the elect, man. You know, although we were in a Gentile state of mind, even in this society, of course, we're now returning back to the, the ways of the Heavenly Father and it's beautiful. I'm going to just leave it there, man. Hopefully this video was edifying. You know, there's so many scriptures you can get on this, man, but yeah, I just wanted to leave it there. Shalom.